In this episode of I Know Jacks, we're gonna start out by making a delicious cocktail with Manifest Distillery. Then we're taking a quick road trip to Fort Lauderdale. We're also gonna check out some fun kitchen gadgets. And I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite upcoming events. I'm Joe Talentino with I Know Jacks, the TV show where I tell you about cool local stuff. Great local restaurants to eat at, local small businesses, local craft beer, upcoming events, and so much more. Remember, I know Jacks. Eat local, drink local, and be local. But first up, we're drinking local. So I'm hanging out with David from Manifest Distillery, and today you're making a drink called Pim's Paradiso, right? Yeah, that's it. So you guys are the, the, the spirit of this drink. How do you like that? Ooh. Spirit of this drink is gin, and you guys do gin a little bit different, right? Sure. So we do. We make an organic gin, and uh, and gin is. I love gin. So when we when we set out to do this, um, gin is one of the products we we could make quickly, right? Because right? there's no aging required. Um, so I would I would call myself a, a self-proclaimed gin head. Gin head. Yes. We probably spent about nine months working on this recipe, scaling up, you know, doing all this stuff, and so we call this really a. Uh, kind of a new world style southern gin. I'm not a gin head. Okay. But I drink this stuff. You're I reformed. Drink, I'm a reformed because it always tasted like soap to me before. And I don't yep. know why that is. Pine trees too, right? Yes, but more soap. Yeah. Like I don't know how to explain it other yeah. than it tasted like soap. But your stuff is really good, and you guys have a barrel-aged version of this as well. We do, and um, so well, we and we get that a lot. People come down to the distillery. I don't, I don't like gin. Uh, we say just taste a, just taste a, a little bit. Taste a little bit of it, and, uh, and they try it. And they go, "Oh, that's really good." And yeah. So my theory is everybody ruined themselves on um, their grandmom's beef eater or something right. in the closet, right? <laughs> well, there, and there's actually an old like kind of uh, epithet of uh, what, what was it? The, the British called it "mother's ruin" for like the gin craze that happened, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really, you know, it, and the stuff they were drinking was awful. Awful, really. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we've come a long way. Yeah, Pim's parody. So. Talk to me. What, so Pim's Dirty, so it's another cocktail. We came up with a, a presentation that we gave recently down in Orlando. Uh, Got to give credit to Matt uh, Williams over at Volstead. Volstead. Matt. Go, go see, see Volstead. Matt. Yep. Go, go, go see, see Matt. Go see those Maybe guys. he'll make one of these for you. Maybe he will. Um, he helped us come up with this. Um, we had some kind of constraints on some parameters on what it had to be, and that's kind of how we came up with it. So um, you get more I'll make creative you when it's in restrict when you're restricted. Yeah, I kind of like working with a restriction. I do too. You know, when people say, "Make me something," well, what? Uh, I don't know. Is, do you is know it, how many possibilities there are? Oh. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> come on, give me something. Uh, so we're going to start with a half ounce of lemon juice. Cool. Then we're going to do a three quarters ounce of this uh, Giffard banana liqueur. The original recipe had a muddled banana. I don't like muddled bananas. No, nope. no, no. Um, this so is better. This is better. Put a little banana bits in. And it has that um, nice sweet element because it's a liqueur. Like it. And then we got three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice. Pineapple, a little more sweet. Yep. A little more sweet, a little tropicality. Oh, yeah. uh, and then we got our famous Pims. The British Pims. The British Pims. <laughs> and, and they put that in everything. They do. They they, they do. They think it's we, we called it earlier. What we call it the uh, the the it's as the Italians to their their Campari. Campari. Right. Or the French Pernod. There you go. Yep. yep. Same sort of deal. Or the Greek Uzo. They pour it in everything. They do. Throw soda on it and they call it a cocktail. You have to have your head back a little bit. Yep. Say it. <laughs> my, uh, my British friends are totally shaking their head. Uh, they're hating. Us. They're hating me. Uh, uh, and then last but certainly not least, heavy pour, heavy pour. Our uh, gin. I love how he does. Oh, he loves me. Just a little extra yeah, yeah, bonus. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to point out flamingos on the glass. Oh, yeah. Totally in character with everything that needs to be done here when it's chilling time. Think about this. Have you ever seen a flamingo that wasn't chill? Heck no. Right. They're, They're always chill. chill. <laughs> I've seen a spoon bill that looked nervous. Oh, well, it's just. That's a North Florida flamingo. Yeah, I mean, look at the, the beak. It's got a whole know, thing so going on. Yeah. Here. I don't know. It's before the nose job was Right. <laughs> The new state bird. Look at that, beautiful. So we're gonna do a oh, little bit of soda water just to give it a little fizziness. And then last but not least for our garnish, we we're will- We're getting all fancy now. We're getting fancy. See if I can see, I wanna see how you do this. Make sure you do it. Properly? Aw awesomely, because awesome is all we accept here. 
pressure's on. <laughs> can't break the garnish. You can't chill when you're doing it like this, can no. you? No, no. no. That's totally, totally. So you got to be like totally against the chill. Oh, look at you. Lemon here, spiral. Sit him right there on top. He's happy. The drink's happy. You're gonna be happy. And now <laughs> I'm gonna be happy. Pim's Paradiso. Pim's Paradiso. Oh yeah, Pim's Paradiso. Check out Manifest Distillery. And hey, if you're gonna grill and chill, hang out with I Know Jax at iknowjax.com. That was an awesome cocktail, right up my alley. I always say I have the best job in Jacksonville because I get to taste a lot of great food, great drinks, and meet a lot of interesting people. That's what I love most about my job, the people. Another thing I love to do is traveling and we're getting ready to take a trip. Florida has a lot of interesting places to visit. Here's one of my favorites, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale is known as the Venice of the United States, so what better way to explore the city than by water? The water taxi was my favorite way to get around. Once upon a time, Fort Lauderdale was known as the spring break destination, but now it's gone more upscale with top-notch restaurants and bars, craft breweries, big yachts, arts, and culture. Of course, I had to visit the famous Los Alas district where I found a wonderful Italian bakery, Grand Forno. There are so many good restaurants, bars, and cafes to choose from in this area. There was even a restaurant with my name. Well, almost anyway. Here's another one of my discoveries. Anne's Floors Coffee and Wine Bar. Now I don't know about you, but I've never seen a place that combines flowers, wine, and baked goods. This unique place is well worth a visit. Of course, boat was not my only mode of transportation when I was in Fort Lauderdale. I also loved the Freebie, a free taxi service that comes and picks you up when you use their app. You see, my phone was really useful during this trip, not only for Uber and freebie, but also to get a scooter. I also made it a point to explore some of the craft breweries in the area. Now, I didn't make it to Funky Buddha, but I visited several others. My favorite was Invasive Species. Now, I tried a lot of their beers. The last thing I did before I left was to visit Lauder Ale. They are located right next to the airport, which was perfect. They even give you a discount if you show your boarding pass. They had really good beers there as well. Now I'm planning to do more trips around Florida in the near future. There's so much to see, but there's still a lot of exploration to be done right here in Jacksonville too. In a little bit, I'll tell you about some of my favorite upcoming events, but first we're gonna check out some cool kitchen gadgets. So I'm hanging out at the Atlantic Beach Brewing Company with my buddy Jeff Spear, the gadget guy. <laughs> and today he's gonna teach us all the fun things about soft, soft boiled oil. eggs. Okay. okay. So one of the things that I find- I see a pirate peeking at me. It's got me a little off my game. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so one of the things that I find that's interesting during my research is that there are lots of kitchen gadgets, lots of cooking tools, but for eggs, there's good gazillion. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, so I'm gonna. This is just for soft boiled. And eggs some today. actually work. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always a little skeptical, even sure. these, but I've tested them. They work. Okay. Hey, 
Let's have some fun. Sounds great. Okay, so the first is, these are two different models of the same product. Okay. Yep, there you go. Uh, these are made by Brainstream. This is a beef egg classic. This is a beef egg pirate. Okay, for you cooking your beef and eggs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you store them with your eggs in the fridge or wherever you gotcha. keep them. When you pull out the pot, fill it up with water, you put your eggs in, you put these into the So it goes in. into the pot? In the pot. Okay. Okay. As the pot gets warmer, it'll ding. When it gets boiling, it dings again. Okay. And then you have three settings. Okay. And so each time, so for soft boiled egg, it'll play a song. Oh, Susanna, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, the pirate plays pirate theme song. Okay. Um, what, you have a second setting, which is a little bit more hard boiled, but not solid. Okay. And then the third one is hard boiled. Hard, all the way hard boiled. Yeah. Hard boiled. Yeah. So, so you got the Goldilocks modes. You got it. And it's what? fun. And I checked it out, and I did the first one, and it was soft boiled. The second one was a little bit harder, and the third so one was So it works. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Amazing. A gadget that works. Yeah. We love those things. <laughs> so once they're cooked, okay. Okay, you have your cup or wherever you're going to put the, the egg. Right. And you need to open it up. Now, some people just crack it open and spoon it out and put it in a bowl. Tap but it with a spoon, go crazy. Some people like to put them in a little egg cup, and when you do that, you need to open up the top. Okay. So this is a traditional egg copper. Yeah. It looks like a piece of scissors on it. here, it's like dogs. Yeah. Um, Don't put your finger in And you in put it. it over top of the egg when it's soft boiled, right. and you just scissor it closed, and it crunches the cup off, and you just pick it off. Okay. Yeah. One way. It's the most direct. Okay. Okay. The second way, and I'm actually going to cut this as a raw egg, but this is called Craig, C-R-E-G-G. -G. Okay. This no. is also made by Brainstream, same people that make the timers. The beep and egg guys. Yeah. yeah, and it's got these tiny little cutting <laughs> blades on it. It's a lot like a glass cutter. Okay, cool. So when you put it on top of the egg, just do that, and then... It's easier, I'm sorry, it's easier when the, when it's hard boiled. But you can see the top was cutting off. Okay. And then the, the, the third way to open the egg, this is made by Rusla. Okay. Okay, this is just a vibrating thing. You put it on top of the egg like this. Okay. Actually, it's better on the narrow end. And I have to put the egg down because I don't want to crack it. But you pull this up and you... Okay, that so sounds... So when you've got the cooked egg, violent. you hold it together and you just do this. And it's got a little edge. Okay. And it actually etches a thing off. And then you just... Tip it off. it off and it goes yeah. right off. Yeah. Oh. I didn't think this is going to work. That's sort of a Rolls Royce version too, right? It is. I mean, Russell is considered best of breed right. for most kitchen uh, tools. Right. Um, and so this is quite nice. And there are other there are other models, other makers, copycats of this. Cool. But it's a nice tool. So anyway, you get to make soft boiled eggs. You've got lots of ways to do it. And if you don't like soft boiled eggs, we can talk about scrambled <laughs> and omelets another time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, listen, if you guys are interested in any of the things you see here on the In Gadget Guy segment, you can go to iknowjacks.com slash gadget guy. Underneath the video, you'll see links to all of the products. I'm a big brunch guy. I really love Sunday brunch, but otherwise I can't say I eat a lot of eggs. Maybe because I usually skip breakfast altogether. But speaking of brunch, one of my favorite drinks is a good Bloody Mary. I know not everyone is into that, but some people just prefer mimosas, but me, well, I can't do brunch without Bloody Mary. Now, not that long ago, I discovered something they called a michelada. They have them at Green Room every Sunday, and it's kind of like a Bloody Mary, but made with beer. Sounds odd, but it's really, really good. So the next time you stop by the Green Room on Sunday, don't be surprised if you see me there sipping a michelada. When I come by Pie Heaven, I love trying the triple berry pie, which is a crowd favorite, and that's blueberry, raspberry, and blackberry. I got hungry for pie um, about the same time that I was getting laid off from a very long insurance career and um, started having these nice long conversations with God on the beach. Hey God, we need a business. What kind of business? And here's a business you can give to somebody who likes to work with food. So I started baking pies out of my kitchen and realized I'm pretty good at this. Thank God for Google, because, you know, I didn't really know how to bake a pie. Cashed in my last 401k and opened pie heaven with a lot of help from some amazing friends. Those girls back there. The triple berry pie is our top seller fruit pie. It kind of runs neck and neck with strawberry rhubarb. 
but it's blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. It's super yummy because it's not too sweet. We don't over sugar stuff. And of course our crust is always handmade from scratch. There you have it, the triple berry pie at Pie Heaven. Every week I put together a list of my top five events of the week. These are events and happenings that I think sound fun and interesting and I don't want you to miss them. Let me know what you think about my picks for this week. Number five is the Jacksonville Boat Show. The indoor boat show is back and as usual there will be a large variety of boats on display from skiing, fishing, cruisers, personal watercrafts, and more. There will also be fishing seminars and some great food trucks like Jamas Jack's, Manny, Son of a Butcher, and Tremendous Barbecue. The boat shows at the Prime Osborne Center from the 24th to the 26th of January. Number four is the Chili Cook-Off. Now I've been to this event at Green Room Brewing several times and I'll always have a good time. Get a ticket for 10 bucks at the door and taste all the chili and get one free beer. They'll also have raffles and limited can releases. Now, most importantly, you get good food, great beer, and all proceeds to benefit Friends of Jacksonville Animals. I'll see you there on January 26th. The event takes place from 2 to 5 p.m. Number three is a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Players by the Sea has a premiere this week. You see, this is a Broadway musical farce that will take us back to ancient Rome. Nope, I don't know how that's gonna work. The main character is a devious slave who makes a deal to win his freedom by playing matchmaker for his lovesick master and complications ensue. Now if you're in for something a little different, this might just fit the bill. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum premieres on January 24th and continues until February 15th at Players by the Sea in Jack's Beach. Number two is 90 Pours first anniversary. Now it seems like this is the month for birthdays, doesn't it? Now I had to put 90 Pour on my list because they have a really cool place, it's run by really cool people, and they're celebrating their first anniversary on January 25th. So make sure to stop by and wish them happy birthday and have a brew. Number one is the fourth annual City Pirate Fest. Ahoy me hearties! St. Augustine is of course known for its pirates and every year they have a special pirate fest. So it's time to brush up on your pirate slang, visit the Colonial Quarter where everybody will be celebrating with music, dancing, magic, games, and more. Now I suspect there might be even some one-legged pirates and eye patches and parrots. Heck, who knows? Dead men tell no tales, they say. The fourth annual City Pirate Fest takes place on January 25th and 26th. That was my top five list for this week. For more info and other events, please visit my website at iknowjacks.com and read my post with a catchy title, Fun Things to Do in January. Thanks for watching. I don't know if I've told you, but I do upload the I Know Jacks TV show to both IGTV and YouTube. You can find the episode on my website as well. So if you're on Instagram, make sure to follow I Know Jax. I often do Instagram stories and I do upload my videos there too. That's it for today. I'll be back next week with another show, but until then, I'll see you on the internet.